What is a state? A state contains information. What is a different state? A different state contains different information. What if you are in one state and want to know what is going on in another state? How would you go about getting to the other state? You would want to move from state one to state two using as little energy as possible. So this means that you would try to move along a path as close to a straight line as possible since any other path other than a straight line would use more energy. What kind of a system would contain these kinds of states and paths? Well, it would be a system that is predictable and passive, not interacting with the states or the paths that it contains. This is the classical view of classical physics, where a set of equations can describe completely any path taken between states, as long as the paths taken follow a certain set of rules. In classical physics, there is an initial state, a final state, and a single path that connects them. This was the view of the universe for hundreds of years until quantum physics came along. In quantum physics, the same set of rules apply for states and paths, but the system that contains them is no longer predictable and passive. This means that there still exists an initial state, a final state, but no longer a single path that connects them. The well-defined equations that describe a single path in classical physics is replaced by equations of probability that describe if a certain path was taken or not. What once was a single path between two states in classical physics now becomes a collection of paths between two states in quantum mechanics. Why is this so? I believe a path between two states becomes unpredictable because the universe is expanding and because of this expansion, what started out as a single path becomes multiple paths between the two states. To understand this, think of a line that represents a single path. As the universe expands, the line that represents the initial path will also expand. This can be represented by drawing multiple lines within a region of space that has expanded outwards from the original path. As time goes on, space will continue to expand and more lines will be needed to represent the path through expanding space. At any point in time, each path between states can be assigned a probability that this was the actual path taken. Based upon this assertion, I would like to apply expanding space to the two-slit experiment. The two-slit experiment is famous for illustrating the wave-particle nature of matter. For example, when shining light through a single slit onto a wall, light behaves like a particle and shines a spot of light upon the wall. When shining light through two slits onto a wall, light behaves like a wave and shines an interference pattern upon the wall. Also, when trying to observe which slit the light went through, the light stops behaving like a wave and starts behaving like a particle, as if the light had passed through a single slit. Why does light behave like a particle when shown through one slit, like a wave when shown through two slits, and like a particle again when being observed? I believe it is not the particle that behaves like a wave, but space itself behaves like a wave as it expands outward. Matter, due to various forces such as gravity and electromagnetism, is rigid and space expands around matter. Like boats on the ocean, the boats remain rigid on the surface of the ocean, but drift apart due to the movement of the water. Likewise, we remain rigid on the surface of the universe, but drift apart due to the movement of space. This drift has a name called the Hubble constant, and is equal to about 70 kilometers per second per megaparsecs. In the two-slit experiment, all of the apparati will remain fixed in space and space will flow around the matter of which they are constructed. In the one-slit experiment, space will flow as a wave and pass through the single slit. Space will then emerge from the slit on the other side as a new wave and continue toward the wall. Everything wants to travel by using the least amount of energy, so any particle traveling through this region of space will follow the wave front and arrive at the wall directly behind the slit. The probability for a particle to take this path will be very high. A particle taking this path 
will travel in a straight line. This part of the experiment displays the particle nature of light since the particle travels from one state to another in a straight line. In the two slit experiment, space will flow as a wave and pass through the double slits. Space will emerge from both slits on the other side as a new wave and continue towards the wall. Again, everything wants to travel by using the least amount of energy, so any particle traveling through this region of space will try to follow the wave front and arrive at the wall directly behind the slit. But, unlike the single slit particle, the double slit particle will be unable to travel along the wave front. The reason for this is due to the fact that the two wave fronts emerging from the slits will create an interference pattern. This interference pattern is created when the two wave fronts cross and cancel each other out. Space that is canceled out is space that does not exist, so nothing can travel through it and must travel around it. This canceled out space can be thought of like barriers that stand in the way of the particle traveling in a straight line. When the particle encounters regions of canceled space, it must either go to the left or to the right around this barrier in order to continue moving forward. This situation is similar to dropping balls down a quincux machine. Each time a ball encounters a peg, it has a 50-50 chance of going one way or the other. The more pegs the ball encounters, the more chances the ball has of going one way or the other. It is impossible to know the exact path the ball will take through the quincux machine, but it is possible to calculate the probability where the ball will end up based upon the number of pegs. Likewise, it is impossible to know the exact path the particle will take after going through the slits, but it is possible to calculate the probability of where the particle will end up based on the number of canceled out regions of space. This part of the experiment displays the wave-like nature of space, since the particle travels from one state to another along lines of probability. These lines represent the possible paths a particle can take from one state to another because space is expanding. It is space that behaves like a wave and not the particle. One confusing aspect of the two-slit experiment occurs when you try to detect which slit the particle goes through before it travels like a wave. It was hoped to observe the particle traveling like a particle as it passed through the slit and like a wave as it dispersed an interference pattern along the wall. But when they observed the particle going through the slit, the particle stopped acting like a wave and started acting like a particle creating a spot of light on the wall directly behind the slit. They were amazed that it seemed like light could tell if it were being observed. Light, they thought, stopped acting like a wave when being observed and started acting like a particle. But what do they mean by observed? In order to observe the particle, you must use particles to observe it. Once you begin to introduce other particles into the experiment, then you destroy the experiment. You can no longer say that it is a single particle, but a system of particles that travel from the slit to the wall. There are forces of interaction between particles that will tend to hold them together. So, the way the single particle travels through space may not be the same for how a system of particles travel through space. For example, a two-body system will orbit around each other. If you move the system along a path between states, the two-bodied system will continue to orbit each other while moving along the path. Each body in the system will move through space through a sinusoidal path while the whole system will move through space in a straight line. When one body is moving up, the other body is moving down. When one body is moving right, the other body is moving left. Each body in the system is chasing the other body in the system, creating orbital motion. 
This motion of the bodies allows for the system to move past obstacles in a straight line. While one body moves around the obstacle in one direction, the other body goes the other way around the obstacle. The overall movement of the system is a straight line. So, in the case of the two-slit experiment, the system will be towards the wall directly behind the slit, while the movement of the particle will be sinusoidal as they orbit around each other. When the system encounters a region of cancelled space, one particle will go one way around the cancelled space and the other particle will go the other way around the cancelled space. This part of the experiment displays the particle nature of light in a two-bodied system since the particle travels from one state to another in a sinusoidal line as it orbits the other particle introduced by observation. It is the total momentum of the system that travels in a straight line from one state to another. And so, this I believe explains the two-slit experiment. It is not particles of light that travel as a wave, but space itself that travels as a wave. Matter remains matter and always travel as a particle. It is the expanding universe that creates waves of space that interact with itself, forcing all of nature to exist within the realm of probability. <laughs> Thank you.